What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about how Big Ben actually works. Big Ben, you know, when Americans think of England, the UK, the de facto, like, one of the de facto figures, physical things that comes to our mind is Big Ben. Or rather, most Americans call the tower Big Ben. This is a misconception, right? The tower is called Elizabeth Tower. The bell inside is Big Ben. I, man, for the longest time, I didn't know that, so I really can't blame, like, my American counterparts here. Literally everyone calls this tower Big Ben. And I was shocked that when I learned that's the name of the bell. Man, the tower has a name, Elizabeth Tower. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. We're not, <laughs> that's not the point. Today, we're appreciating the, what, the engineering marvel that is Elizabeth Tower and Big Ben and, and clocks and how it works, I imagine. The title of this video is The Mechanical Genius of Big Ben. That is strong words. Mechanical genius. Uh, really quite fascinating. This is like some kind of... Some kind of combination of uh, appreciating engineering and uh, some of English culture as well. Sounds good to me. So let's take a look. Westminster. Oh, let's start at the beginning though. Standing on the banks of the River Thames in the heart of London, England, is the Palace of Westminster. Right. Better known as the Houses of Parliament. A labyrinth of more than three miles of corridors connecting more than 1,000 grand rooms, chambers, and vaults. This site has been- What? Wait, I didn't even- <laughs> I'm learning stuff about Parliament. 3,000... Hold on, how long is it? How many chambers? A labyrinth of more than three miles of corridors. Three miles? How? What? Three miles of corridors? Thousands of rooms? I actually didn't realize that, uh, Big Ben is right next to- to Parliament and all that. I don't have a good visual understanding in my, my brain of where everything's laid out, so this is actually very helpful. This site has been the home of the British government for centuries. It's built to look like a giant medieval castle. Yeah. But it hides many modern secrets. This Whoa. immense palace was completed in 1870 has more than 1,000 rooms spread across eight acres. It has three spectacular towers. I'm, what? This is very dramatic. I mean, this is a well-done video. This is so... Gosh, the music and the, the 3D animation? This is drama. To the south, the Victoria Tower, the tallest square tower in the world when it was completed. Oh. In the center, the huge spire has over 2,000 panes of glass. And to the north, the iconic Big Ben, home to one of the greatest timepieces the world has ever seen. Mm. Right. An engineering marvel. When it was constructed, this was one of the most advanced buildings on the planet. One of the most advanced buildings when it was constructed. That makes a lot of sense. First of all, watches and timepieces are famously complex, let alone building one into a giant tower that has survived all the way up until now and is iconic. How did the Victorians make the world's largest, most ambitious clock and have it run on time in a tower almost 100 meters tall? Okay. Inside the tower, it's master clockmaker Ian Westworth's job to keep Big Ben running to time. Oh, that's cool. There's like, wow, how important is this guy? This is like such a specialized position. You're the guy who services Big Ben and makes like fixes stuff, I imagine. That's like one of the most obscure jobs imaginable, but very important. Look at the inside of the tower, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what I expected, but it's like just this kind of old spiral staircase. Uh, I guess the public can't come in here, and not, not that there's much to look at. I, I guess I expected something different, like some kind of fancy museum or, or ancient uh, British architecture on the inside. This is just a, 
It's just a never-ending staircase. It's uh, 334 stairs in the clock tower and no lift, unfortunately. Right. Inside this iconic clock tower hangs Big Ben itself, the 13-ton bell that gives the tower its nickname. The bells that chime on the quarter hour sit around it. Their strikes are controlled by the intricate ticking mechanism at the heart of the tower. It keeps the clock accurate to within just two seconds a week. Keeps the clock accurate to within two seconds. Yeah, I know there's a lot of, gosh, there's a lot of engineering in clocks to like keep them accurate and maintain that accuracy. Not that I understand any of it. I also didn't know that there were five bells total inside the tower. How'd they even get the bell up there back in the day, you know? How did they? Amazing. On each side, 312 shards of opal glass make up the clock face. The copper minute hands are 14 feet long, as tall <laughs> as a double-decker bus. <laughs> wow. These famous dials have kept London running on time for 160 years. Wow, I've never really stopped and appreciated it before. So there's a clock face on every face of the square tower. Not just one. They're beautiful. They're like works of art all by themselves. Gosh, and just to think how long ago these were built and how well done it was. It's pretty amazing what uh, humans can do. This clock needs winding. When Parliament commissioned this clock in 1854, they demanded that Big Ben should be the biggest, the most powerful chiming clock in the world. And, most challenging for the age, accurate to within two seconds per week. Okay. But there was a problem with making such a giant clock accurate. The clock makers of the day said you just couldn't do it. Our minute hands are 14 feet long, so in a good gust of wind, they act as like sails. And clocks yeah. before this time, the wind would catch the hands, and the hands would drive back and make the clock inaccurate. The secret to stopping... <laughs> a clock so big that one of your biggest problems is the wind blowing your clock away, or your clock hand away. These are uh, 14 feet, enormous. And uh, it's just kind of funny watching, like, someone still to this day has to go up and physically wind the clock with a giant, like, metallic winding mechanism. Strong gusts blowing the hands out of time is a set of heavy weights that pull the hands round as they drop. Two swinging arms keep the weights dropping at the correct speed by pushing the pendulum, which sets the ticking speed of the clock. What? The pendulum turns a ratchet wheel once every second. Wow. Which releases the weights by a precise amount. So there's gigantic weights suspended in the center of the tower at all times. And without anybody seeing it, they're raised and lowered by this like insane pulley system. That's very precise and ticking like every second. I would <laughs> never in my wildest dreams have imagined it works like this. So they can pull the clock hands round at exactly the right speed. Is right at the very back. You can see just see the pendulum swing left and right, and then a f like a three-legged fly fan going round. It's very simple when you actually think about it. Huh. Yeah, the Victorians sure. had stopped the wind influencing Big Ben. But with any clock, minute changes in the atmosphere can also affect the mechanism. Oh, jeez. And the bigger the clock, the bigger the impact. Today, Ian uses technology that Victorian clockmakers could only dream of. Right. A system of sensors hooked up to a computer allows him to... Well, how long ago was this video made? Five years ago? I was gonna say, his laptop does... <laughs> no offense to his laptop, but it doesn't even look that that modern. I mean, uh, compared to what tools you need to, like, analyze a um, very, very, very old clock mechanism, I'm sure this gets the job done. Monitor the tiny atmospheric changes. 
We've got temperature in the clock room, which we monitor all the time. The green line tracks changes in temperature that cause the mechanism's metal to expand and contract. Ah. These, just these little blips on the temperature are people coming in. That's how accurate we're actually monitoring what's going on inside the clock room. What? Like vibrations or, or like the disturbance of a human walking around the tower is picked up in that device. Also, just of course, the metal contracting and expanding because of temperature, the wind blowing. They had to build it so that the wind can't affect it. There are so many little things like that go into something like this that I just would never... I mean, that's why I love little videos like this. I just never in a million years would have thought about this kind of stuff. Another sensor allows Ian to check the effect of these temperature changes on the pendulum. Mm. At the bottom of the 14 and a half feet long. You know what would be good? If, when was this made? I'm sure he said, what year was a uh, Big Ben built? 1843, almost 200 years, like 180 years, okay pendulum there's an optical sensor every time the pendulum breaks the optics it sends a message to this laptop the pendulum should be breaking it every two seconds and the brown line down the middle is telling us exactly how close to two seconds we are hmm. at the moment we're running at 2.00012 she's doing absolutely fantastic apart from being a, a little bit slow a little bit slow. <laughs> Amazing after 200 almost 200 years how this thing was just so well built. I mean look at it, too It's made this is the real deal. It's made of like giant metal cogs and stuff Ian thinks that the day's temperature changes have caused this inaccuracy It may be small, but without expert intervention It will knock the clock five seconds out of time in a single oh. day What Ian must check if Big Ben is on time Wait, wait, wait. When did this start becoming a problem? Obviously, they couldn't have... They didn't have the equipment to measure it like this. Or the, the ability to fix it or measure um, back in the day. Yet, they're saying if they don't address this, it'll be five seconds off time, day by day, that they don't address the problem. So, af after enough time went by... I guess uh, the the clock eventually started to like actually wear down or something, or maybe it just did. Um, maybe they did have ways to measure or fix the time back in the day, like less accurate, but still ways to do it. He gets an accurate reading of Greenwich Mean Time, and then heads to the Belfry. Mm. The moment of truth. It's almost 10 a.m. Oh my God! Look at look at the bell. He's next, he is next to one of the tiny ones, and it's as big as he is. And Big Ben on the side of the frame here is like a monster in size. Will Big Ben chime the hour on time? Is he so in what danger? you'll see, this is the first hammer that moves, so it doesn't come as a shock. If you watch that one, it'll lift up and drop and play the 16 notes. Then there's a pause of about 10 seconds, and then that one will go. It'll Look at that thing. That's the, that's the sledgehammer that bangs on Big Ben. Is it dangerous to be up there? He has ear protection on. But how loud is this thing? I mean, look at it. It'll be any moment now. Oh. Oh. I know this tune. That tune that's like a famous clock tune is is that famous because of Big Ben or was that used before Big Ben uh, that's literally that's literally the clock tune that I've heard the 16 Wow oh hold on there's Big Ben <laughs> Big Ben's chime roars across the capital at 118 decibels, almost wow. as loud as a jet plane taking off. Wow. You can feel the fire. I wonder how, how far away from this clock tower can you be and still hear it? Can you be like miles and miles away and hear it? I would guess. 
Can all of London hear this? Vibration of the bell throughout the whole bell frame. When the bell was first fitted, you could hear it 10 kilometers away. Nowadays, you'd be lucky to hear it half a kilometer away across the river. Oh, okay. So, huh, that's interesting. It's lost power or something. You used to be able to hear it 10 kilometers away. And now you can, you'd be lucky to hear it half a kilometer away. Oh, that's sad. That's too bad. Because there's so much noise in London now. Oh, because there's so much noise. It's not because Big Ben has gotten weaker. I was thinking, like, how does that work? A bell is a bell. You're smacking it with a giant hammer. It's going to make noise. It's because London is so loud now. Okay. But is the clock on time? We're one second slow. Okay. With the temperature affecting Big Ben this much, Ian needs to bring the clock back up to speed. What? I, <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, okay, one second off. That's pretty good. That's pretty amazing. Well done. And he's like, immediately, he's like, oh, this is, a, no, no, no. This is a huge problem. We're, we're a minute. We're one second off. This, uh, we got to fix this. It's like, wow. But how can he adjust the time on a clock that's got 14 feet long hands? Yeah. Ian knows the secret that has been passed down from Big Ben's original clock keepers. Really? Traditionally what we do, we add a penny. One penny, old pre-decimal coin, speeds the clock up just to bring the clock back into time. What? Like those original clock keepers, Ian knows this tiny weight raises the pendulum's center of gravity. What? Talk about like the an old school method. That's awesome, actually. A secret passed down from the uh, from the old keepers of Big Ben, the old clockmakers. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess the secret's out now because uh, it's on this YouTube video and everyone knows it. But <laughs> it's not that so much that it's a secret, but it is super cool. They add like a coin, one coin of weight to the pendulum is enough to influence it about a second in time. Wow. And makes it swing faster. We've corrected it and it's come back up to time. Huh. That's pretty good for a 160 year old clock. That is With good. With a mixture of Victorian know-how and modern technology, Ian keeps Big Ben in perfect time. Huh. Wow. Wow. That's fascinating. Wow, this is a good video. This was by Discovery UK. That's probably why it was so good. Um, I like that. I really like that. That's fascinating. You know, Big Ben is such a icon. Like, it represents London, and honestly, England, and it re like, uh, Britain, Big Ben, and, uh, I guess Elizabeth Tower, more properly said. It's just like an icon, and I've never seen the inside of it. <laughs> the spiral staircase. <laughs> uh, the weights on the center, how that works, the pendulum. And this guy whose entire job is to be the guy who knows how to, like, keep it in time to within a second. I wouldn't have even thought that they could control it that finely because it's hundreds of years old. But, uh, wow. This, this was full of little nuggets of fun information. I really enjoyed this video. That was quite fascinating. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, uh, me reacting to uh, the UK, stuff in the UK that I've never seen before, UK culture, things like that, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.